the bead for the birth of our son. When Nathayam was born, the actual Norm Spellman was standing with the Navi community, but not his avatar body. But the avatar of Norm Spellman was seen again after a couple of years. So exactly what the hell happened to the avatar of Norm Spellman? There can be two possible reasons behind that. The avatar of Norm Spellman was actually dead, and the new avatar was born and raised within the 14 years of gap. So this was the second avatar of Norm Spellman. The avatar of this guy was severely wounded in the climax scene of Avatar 1 after taking fire on his shoulder, and it took some time for the avatar body to get a complete recovery from the physical trauma. And the second theory makes even more sense. Yes, sir. In the movie, Took and Nathayam had four fingers, but Loak and Kiri had five fingers. What was the reason behind that? I tried to make a lot of theories on this topic until I realized that the differences in physical structure was due to the genetic and epigenetic differences among Jake Sully, Natiri, Dr. Grace Augustine, and the mysterious boyfriend. Just like we humans also get the combined physical features of our mother and dad due to the genetic and epigenetic differences, Took and Nathayam also got four fingers from the genetics of Natiri. On the other hand, Loak got five fingers from his father Jake and Kiwi got five fingers from a mother, Dr. Grace Augustine. And it's gonna be even better if Avatar 3 unfolds the story on how Dr. Grace Augustine met with the father of Kiri. <laughs> That small toy in the hand of baby Kiri was an Ikran. It was a toy Ikran. The boy behind Kiri to the left side was Nathayam, and the sad boy to the right side was Loak, who is always sad, like very, very sad. There is a higher possibility that Took was not born that time. I hate you, Tom Divinity, Noah! In the past, Loak was seen to be unhappy when the other siblings were playing with the toy Ikran, and now he is fighting with Kiri to get the toy back. Maybe the toy belonged to Loak, but occupied by the other siblings, especially Kiri. This fishing scene with Nathayam was one of the most favorite memories of Jake Sully. No wonder why Jake Sully chose to tap into that specific memory of Nathayam after his death in the climax scene. How tall is he? What does Spider carry with himself every time he goes to the village? It's an oxygen tank and possibly attached with a communication device. Happiness is simple. Look at their picture and you will find out different facial expressions of Loak and Kiri. They always seem to be very different from the other siblings and doing things in their own ways with a rebellious mindset. And these two are also the ones who saved the life of their parents in the end of the movie. And it really works as a proof that the people with a higher level of intelligence and integrity don't like to go with the flow and they love doing everything the way they like. Jake Sully was also like that in the past. <laughs> This was a very sick move, but it would never be possible without the low gravity on Pandora. Wifley. Every avatar over there had the same tattoo they had once on their human bodies. Even the haircutting style is almost the same. The avatar of Miles Gorge also had a similar wristwatch and locket in his neck just like he had before. Pretty impressive detail. What you won't remember is my death because it hasn't happened yet. And it ain't gonna. Yeah, I got them by the balls with that. When this turns into a shit fight, which it will. If you observe the choice of words of Miles Scourge, you will find out that he always talked in present simple or future tense, and he talked as if the situation would actually occur irrespective of what happened. It really shows how much of an overconfident person he was. Does the hair of an avatar grow proportionately to the length of his neural extension? The answer is no. It's gonna make more sense if we say that the hair of an avatar gets trimmed to the size of the extension, because if the extension just gets bigger and bigger with the passage of time, people are going to be in much much trouble in maintaining this thing, and the failure in the maintenance of this neural extension could turn out to be even deadly. To get the minds of the saltiest on-world operators, yeah, like Corporal Wayne Fleet over there. Why were Lyle and the others getting into link units? It's because they were performing log training for their avatar bodies which were made as a backup in case of anything happened to them. Which means the process was going on long before the arrival of Jake Sully to Pandora. And it ain't gonna stick to them, right? Hell yeah. Well, whatever happened. When Miles Scourge said on the video log that he was not dying any sooner, the avatar of his dead body was reacting to the video with a sarcastic facial expression. The maglev train was not directly levitating about the rail track. A small plate was in between the lines attached with the train which was working as a brake pedal. We are not in Kansas anymore. We are going to Pandora. Miles Scourge also said the same thing in Avatar 1 during his introduction to the newly appointed Marine Corporals. You are not in Kansas anymore. 
You are on Pandora. Oh, you're all asking yourselves the same question. The pack of avengers not only had the similar physical features of their human forms, but also the behavioral features to a higher degree. For example, Miles Scourge had a habit of putting his hand on his waist while talking, and he used to pinch his lips whenever he was angry or serious. You can get to see the same patterns of physical expression in the avatar of Miles Scourge. Pretty impressive detail. That's pretty potent mix. Miles Scourge also said the same thing in Avatar 1 complimenting the Avatar program. That's a potent mix. Give me the goosebumps. The tails Ow. are weak. You'll be slow in the water. Just like Dr. Grace Augustine, Chiri also turned out to be a badass woman with a Sigma personality. Here we go. I'm not even true not the oh. Oh. Yes, we are. Kitty, can you go help your grandmother with the wounded, please? My brother is wounded. You are grand move. You are grandmother, but Jan the Bach is better. Avatar zone, Lake, go around! <laughs> this is Jake Sully. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know who you are, and I don't need you. I need your brother. Oops. Grace? Well, who'd you expect, numb nuts? Stay with the ship. One idiot with a gun is enough. In Avatar 1, Nitiri was dressed almost naked, but in this one, she was given this torn out attire. Was that intentional by director James Cameron to make her look even hotter? I guess so. Nothing less than to make Pandora the new home for humanity. They were ready to invade Pandora and turn that moon into a habitable planet, but they had no interest in making Earth habitable again. You know why? Because switching to another gun is always faster than reloading, which means switching to an already habitable planet like Pandora is faster than renovating planet Earth. For you, it might be a normal scene. For me, I can notice how skilled that guy Spider is that he managed to climb back to the floating mountains like the other avatars even after being a human being. This is amazing. I strongly do believe that an avatar body of this guy can turn out to be even stronger than Miles Scourge. I was doing that thing again, wasn't I? Yeah, you were. Exactly what the hell was that thing Kiri was doing on the ground? She was connecting with Ewa by laying on the ground, listening to her heartbeat and maybe even feeling her presence. I hear her breathing. I hear her heartbeat. And the grass swaying on the ground was just a result of an energy surge between Ewa and Kiri. Furthermore, her mom, Dr. Grace Augustine, was highly invested in the secrets of Ewa Tree. Really interesting going on in there biologically. I would die to get samples. And Kiri also got the same interest from her mother. It won't be a surprise if this girl turns out to be a great botanist in the aftermath installments of the Avatar franchise. Also in Avatar 1, the sacred seeds of Ewa sat on the Avatar of Jake Sully, which was a manifestation of his spiritual message. After sensing the pure vibration of Jake Sully, Ewa was inviting him to the Navi community as a new member. And Jake Sully realized this thing in the end of the movie. You chose me for something. I will stand and fight. The same thing can also be seen in Avatar 2. What does the Great Mother want from me? Kiri was also given a similar kind of spiritual message by Ewa, and she realized the essence of it in the end of the movie. She finally turned out to be a hero who saved the life of her mother, who was going to be the next Sahik among the forest tribe. There is a higher possibility that Kiri can do more for the Navi community than Jake Sully or Loak. She is a chosen one, a chosen hero. There goes our T-1000 from Terminator 2. Why did Miles Scorch break the skeleton of his human form? Because he wanted no attachment to his past failure. That skull would directly remind him of his previous failure in neutralizing his targets who were Jake Sully and Nitiri. You grounded. You see that knife on the chest of Jake Sully? This knife was also seen in the climax scene of Avatar 1 in the hand of Miles Scorch. But there is another possibility that Jake Sully made another knife looking similar to this one. The avatar of Miles was drinking coffee. Does it mean that the avatars can also eat human foods? Definitely. But the humans were never seen to be eating avatar foods. So, there's a higher possibility that an avatar can take human foods, but a human being might not be able to take avatar foods. You betray Jake Sully. I know you'd never do that. You're loyal and I admire loyalty. 
Miles Scourge had a deep admiration for loyalty because all of his operatives stayed loyal to him until death except for Jake Sully. Maybe he was a bad person but his loyalty to his workers was unyielding. You see the big thumb on the wall? It doesn't look like the thumb of Spider because his hand was not that big enough and the thumb had four fingers if you look closely. Furthermore, the thumb of Spider was clean when he was abducted by Miles. So there's a higher possibility that the thumb was of any avatar from the home tree for rest captured for experimentation and interrogation. Also the avatars had the tradition of painting themselves in different different occasions and there was also a white thumb of Jake Sully on the chest of Natiri in Avatar 1. Therefore all of these things foreshadow the presence of any avatar inside the cell where Spider was detained. The sea clans are a world unto themselves. Thousands of islands. You see those ocean creatures on Jake's way to Eloatu village? This was the same species of marine creatures that haunted Loak in the ocean near Three Brothers Rocks. One life ends. Kiri was seen to be riding on her own Ikran only once in the entire movie. Are we going to see her again flying on her Ikran and attacking the bridgehead base in Avatar 3? It's gonna be very cool if it really happens. This movie is really a perfect example of feminism and female empowerment. Females over here are very bold, independent, and supported towards their men. Females are also seen present and very active in decision making. And these attributes are very contrary to the bitches we get to see nowadays talking about equality bullshit, pretending to be a strong independent woman by selling their dignity on the internet and playing the victim card when they cannot pretend to be a strong independent woman anymore. Fuck. This weird body structure of the fish in fact reminds me of something. I mean, it really looks like that thing. I mean that thing. To do so, we go Navi. You see those words embedded on the suit? It means Project Phoenix, which is the name of the recombinant Navi program symbolizing the return from the dead and exploding Pandora. This is a warrior's knot, not easy to master. Riding on a Surak is a lot lot easier than riding on an Ikran because you're more likely to die falling from so high if you just fail to tame down your Ikran and make a bond with it. But there's almost no possibility of death in case the Navi people fail to control the Surak and fall over because they will just fall into water. Also the Suraks are not nearly as aggressive as the Ikrans tend to be. <laughs> I have also found out many scenes of Jake Sully from Avatar 1 and 2 which work as an evidence that he doesn't like the hard and fast rule of learning. And this thing really makes sense because a hero should not be depicted as an overpowered monster but a flexible entity. Just because you're a hero doesn't mean that you will demonize his vulnerabilities. A hero should be someone who can be bent but never broken. And that's the beauty we can also notice in the character of Optimus Prime, John Wick, Doctor Strange, Neo and many other people. This is what you call a true hero. Jake Sully did it the hard way. This guy is a legend. Jake Sully got his Ikran the hard way, but this guy got his Ikran even in a harder way. He flew with his Ikran without any bond for a while and survived the incident. <laughs> There is a higher possibility that the shark located Loak by tracing the blood smell from the creature that he just killed with the harpoon. <laughs> Loak did not gesture the Ilu to jump out of water. Ilu recognized the sudden incoming of the shark even before Loak and it happened because the left eye of Ilu could see clearly what was going on inside water. 